Good day to our viewers. Uh, my name is Chris Voisey. I am a voice coach and um, a facilitator and tutor in the area of communication and presentation skills. It's my great pleasure to, uh, into, to bring to you an interview on behalf of Blue Frontier Path Academy, where we are talking to Dr. Izzy Malachi. A big welcome to you, Dr. Malachi. Thank you very much. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Lovely to have you with us. Um, so we're going to just talk to you for the next uh, 12 or 13 minutes, Dr. Malachi, on your life and uh, what it is that you have to offer into the world of academia. I'm very interested to hear a little bit about your story and your journey and also how you got to your own PhD and also about the book that you've written. But maybe let's just start with a little bit of your story and your journey. Okay. Thank you very much for that question, Chris. Um, I'm basically from Harangua, which is a township in the northern part of Pretoria. I did most of my schooling there. Uh, particularly, there was a Catholic school, or there is still a Catholic school there, Zoho High School. Uh, that's where I went to in terms of my education. Then after that, I went to Technicon Pretoria where I did a, B, a, sorry, a national diploma in cost and management accounting and then went over to do the BTEC. But it was not easy in those days because Technicon Pretoria at the time was still like, um, I think 98% Africans and only 2% non-Africans speaking. So meaning that in my first year, you know, I did my studies in Africans, which was uh, not that easy. That must um, have been a real challenge for you. I mean, were you familiar with the language? Did you just pick it up very quickly? Okay. I had Africans up until um, um, metric, ah. but was, you know, on a second language basis. However, mm. there, there were new terms in terms of accounting. You know, you had to learn things such as clandisi varbe. As much as the textbook was in English, but the class was delivered in African. So ah. it made it very difficult, which meant that I had to work extra hard, you know, to be able to catch up and understand what was going on um, in, in the classroom situation. Mm. Mm. But, um, you know, for me, it was not an option uh, to, to fail or to move out. That was the only thing that I had. So I had to push as much as possible in order to finish um, my studies because my, my family uh, was not that well off. So whatever little money we had available, it had to go into something that I was going to achieve at the end. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's fantastic. So that, that was a tough journey, but you you survived it and you came out victorious. <laughs> yes, um, I survived that. I came out victorious. And beyond that, I decided to do my postgrad uh, studies. That's when now I did my uh, master's, but I also did it at... at um, a technical Pretoria, and at the time it just merged with other institutions and it became the Twani University of Technology. Mm. So in terms of the masters, it was very expensive. As you know, our education is very expensive in South Africa, mm. but I was fortunate enough that at the time I was working for Twani University of Technology. So um, the fees were covered by the institution. Oh. And, and that is something, you know, that is very daunting for any other a person in South Africa who wants to study. You know, if you want to do your postgrad, you look at the fees. I mean, we're talking about over 100,000 for just one year. And you ask yourself, you know, is it worth it? Do I have the money? But if you have someone who's paying for you, like your employer, it makes it much, much easier as well. And of course, in terms of being worth it, it opens doors. I mean, once one has those qualifications, more doors are open to you in the employment field. Isn't that true? Um, I, I bet to differ a bit, Chris, okay. you know, because it's something also that I have highlighted in my, in my book, you know, when, when, um, I, I started with my master's, you know, um, I believe that by the time I finish, I will be able to automatically go into a higher position, but that is not guaranteed because as a person, you also have to prove yourself in terms of skills, in terms of background and experience. So you need to build yourself up. It's not an automatic thing to say that if you have a master's, then automatically there will be doors that are opening for you. You also need to bring something to the table over and above um, that piece of paper that you have. And this is what I wrote about in my book to say that, you know, there is that expectation that once you get a, a degree, then automatically, you know, there will be that door that's opening for you. You still need to go and knock 
on a lot of doors before a particular door can be opened for you. So that was my experience. Uh, somebody else might have had a, a, a different experience, but I'm talking about what mm -hmm. I have been through and mm -hmm. what I have experienced. And I think maybe even more so given the fact that you're a woman, um, I mean, and, and in the field that you were in, that is classically quite a male-dominated field. Or am I wrong with that? Okay. You are quite right, Chris. You know, um, being a woman, there are more challenges mm. than um, that of a man. Mm. Because first of all, you must um, take into account your situation from home. Like in my instance, one, I have kids, um, a husband... I'm somebody's daughter, I'm employed as well. So there's those four balancing roles that I have to play, you know, for me to be able to achieve or to be able to move forward in my career. Mm -hmm. So um, it also becomes difficult because as much as you want to push, you want to go ahead in your career, there's those other factors that you must take into account. You know, your kids, uh, my family, you need to balance that. And 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 um, as, as you go higher in, in the echelon, you can even see, you know, when you are doing your, your your PhD or when you're doing your master's, you can even see in class the percentage there, there's fewer women than men. Also, when you go into executive positions, there are fewer women than men. And you ask yourself why. It's because of those factors that I have mentioned. As a woman, you first need to think about your family, your husband, your kids, all the other roles that you are playing, which makes it a little bit more difficult. Whereby if it's a man, for them, it's quite easy. You know, they are able to push and move forward faster than um, with females. Mm. And I suppose, you know, traditionally, there's kind of a tradition that, that one has to fight against in a way because traditionally men have held those roles. And uh, now more and more women. I mean, it's very important what's happening in the world, not only in Africa, of course, throughout the world, where men have kind of, you know, uh, almost controlled those top positions. But if we look at leadership, amongst women today, even with the pandemic, if we look at those countries that are led by women, one has noticed that their action, the things that they have done in relation to the pandemic, the way they've kept their countries going in many cases has been way more successful than has happened with some men. So the, the need for women to come into leadership positions is very strongly there in business, in government, in all sorts of fields. Would you agree with that, uh, Dr. Malachi? Yes, um, Chris, I agree very uh, much with that. And as, as um, I always say, women need more support yeah. uh, as compared to men. You know, we need support, we need opportunities. And, and sometimes as women, we do not give each other support. You know, you might find that there is a woman who is in leadership, but she prefers to bring up men instead of bringing other women. Because of, um, you know, as women, we, we tend to be or we tend to want to be the only one, you know, mm -hmm. in, in the higher economy, whereby it should not be like that. You know, we, we should be pulling as much as you go up, you must pull another woman with you, you know, so that we can have more women um, in, in higher positions and, and not don't pull somebody simply because they are a woman. It needs to be someone who's got the skills, who's got the ability, someone who's got the experience. It should be on what they can deliver, not on simply because they are a, wom a woman. But I always um, like to mention that, you know, in my working environment, by the way, currently I work for the National School of Government. In my working environment, we have um, a, a male head of department. So he is very, um, he is very interested in moving, ensuring that women can move forward. Mm -hmm. I think he's made it his personal uh, uh, um um, in his personal capacity, he's taken up upon himself to ensure that, you know, he can develop and make sure that there are more women that are coming up. So we need people like that. Um, you know, no, uh, we need men like that who will ensure that there are women who are developed. There are women who are given an opportunity. There are women, you know, who can succeed in whatever role that they are put in. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was reading somewhere where a, a top, top woman leader in business in the United States said that, you know, all through her career, men had enabled her to take the steps going up. But of course, men have to do that. They have to enable people to take, enable women to, to go into the roles and to step up. Because really, I don't know if you covered it in your book, but, but a woman has so many um, 
what is the word, uh, values and important aspects, part of their personality in terms of emotional intelligence, a greater understanding of human nature. I, I think that is there in the studies that I've done on leadership. Would you agree with that? I mean, women seem to be poised for greater leadership roles today throughout the world, I think. Yes, I agree with you 100% there. Women um, have got it in them. All that they need, they need support. Uh, they need to be given an opportunity. And support, it's not only from um, the office. You need also support from home, you know, in terms of your spouse or your partner. Someone who can say, okay, go and do it. I will stay behind and look after the kids. Yeah. Go and do this. I will stay behind and support you in this role. Because um, as women, we've got many roles that we are playing. So we need that support. We need somebody to open doors for us. And yeah. I've mentioned in my book about um, the different people who have opened doors for me or who have given me the opportunity to be able to get to where I am today. Yeah. And, and, and as you have rightly said, most of those people are male. They are men. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I always say that I hope I'm not the only person who got those opportunities from those, um, you know, the people who were my supervisors, my managers, the executives in the companies that I've worked for. I mm. hope they get to open for other women as well. But but yeah. also as a woman, when you are given an opportunity, you need to grab it and and, and run with it, you know, ensure that uh, you can come out victoriously on the other side and yeah. say, yes, I am a woman, I can lead people. Yeah, you you need to rise to the challenge. People need to rise to the challenge.